Huge Silksong news today? What? From Auto? Yesterday, the Silksong's Steam store page got a small update where a new image <laughs> asset called a vertical capsule was added. <laughs> We can tell that while it uses the old promotional artwork for Silk Song, it is still a newly created asset and not an old one being reused. Holy Next, shit! The background in the Silk Song <laughs> store page also got a small change. The background change. too? Before, They're getting it! Sure it's basically here! Change Tomorrow? Confirmed? Not much to talk about here since it was just less than a second of the footage from the Xbox. Oh, you mean the Xbox trailer where over a year ago they said guaranteed it'll be here within a year? <laughs> You remember that one over a year ago when they said guaranteed every game we're showing today will be out within a year on Game Pass? That one? Got it. Just making sure. Trailer. And that's all for today. This has been your daily news for Silk Song for today, September 22nd, 2023. <laughs> the way he says that is today. funny. <laughs> 2023. Bro, I'm so excited for this guy to get fucking 6 million views. Whenever they finally fucking release it, whenever it's finally coming out, this guy's gonna get a, just a fucking banger video. It will get released. This game will get released. You, you guys are fucking capping if you think it won't. This game will get released and it'll be fun and I'm gonna really enjoy it. So, and it's gonna fucking fill the void in our lives, okay? Any problems that I have will not be problems after this game releases, because it's gonna be so fun. Any insecurities I have, I'm not gonna feel insecure about it anymore because I have this fucking game, all right? I genuinely feel like that in the past. People feel like that all the time. People feel like that for every AAA game that has a nice trailer. <laughs> It's the curse of gamers, bro. They see a fucking game and they think it'll just fucking solve their their general angst with the world. Their general anxiety. Like, I, I'll just be able to dive into it and it'll be so fun. I won't have to think about anything else. And then the game comes out and it's human and it's real and it's sloppy and it has mistakes and it has bugs and it's not what you expected. And they get mad and they get angry or they, they go the other way and they hyper defend it because <laughs> they need it to be real. And then the cycle continues. Not Elden Ring. Elden Ring was that good. <laughs> for a lot, I mean, that game was really fucking good, bro. I mean, for a while, I was just focused on Elden Ring. Nothing bad in the world happened for El when Elden Ring, the week Elden Ring came out. As a one-man team, I should just make Elden Ring. Yeah, I think you should. I think if you're an indie dev and you're trying to like figure out what kind of game you should make, just make Elden Ring. Obviously, you can't. it's already been made, so don't do that. But make something exactly as good and as grand in scope and as polished and with the lore and make it even better though, actually. No, not Lies of P, it has to be even better than Elden Ring. Otherwise you're not gonna stand out. Why don't they all just do that? Are they stupid? I think so. I think so. I asked my good friend, uh, John Rossello over at Unity and he told me, yeah, all developers are stupid. <laughs> and I wouldn't, that guy wouldn't lie to me. Said they're all stupid. Uh, Riccatello? I'm oh, sorry, I actually forgot his name. <laughs> I just <laughs> rolled. World Peace Restored when Skate 4 comes out. Skate's got a real diehard audience. It's the Skate, I, I never played Skate, but I know that Skate lovers just fucking ride or die for their squad, for their team. I guess I, I'm gonna be more of a boomer because I only played Tony Hawk. I feel like if you hit your uh, console gaming prime around Xbox One, PS4 era, you're a skate head. But if it's before that, oh, is it 360? Maybe I'm dead wrong. Maybe maybe, maybe I'm doing one generation back. Uh, and then before that, if you're like PS2, GameCube era, then you're Tony Hawk. Skate feels good the way Melee feels good. Yeah, if the controls are made, that's sick. All games will die once Chess 2 hits for real, for real. I wonder what they would do if Chess was owned by somebody. If Chess really had an IP. Like if EA just owned Chess. <laughs> Can you imagine what they would fucking do to this game? The fucking microtransaction, the skins, the DLC pieces. I mean, for sure, when your pawn makes the other side of the board, it would be by default for free, you could get a knight. <laughs> but if you want to upgrade to a queen or a bishop or whatever, it's gonna, you have to pay. You have to pay. That's for sure. You get the free knight for, I mean, that's fair, that's free. But the queen's paywall. Unity would charge per move. By the way, what was my exact fucking phrase? whenever the Unity stuff broke. I said, I'm not gonna make a video covering it because in a week they're gonna backtrack. <laughs> oh, what'd they do? They backtracked super fucking hard. Cause sometimes a decision is so incredibly dumb 
you can tell that some exec just forced it down mid and it'll actually hurt the business model of the company so hard. It was, it, to me, it was the exact same thing as when Twitch did the thing where you couldn't run ads on stream. They're like, you can only have a logo that's 3% size of your screen and only we're allowed to sell ads. And I was like, bro, every streamer will quit. It makes no sense. And they backtrack. I still want to talk about it. I kind of wanted to do a uh, some kind of follow-up vid because I feel like there's a larger lesson in how fucking... Just like this feels like we're in the era of some really fucking overpaid dumbass CEOs. <laughs> I feel like that Unity CEO who takes, you know, $300 million over three years in like stock compensation is just like so, so, so not helping his company. It's like actively hurting. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's a complete like fail upwards kind of thing. And Unity is a company that doesn't make money right now. It's not profitable. And they had a very easy route to just like raise prices per seat on the, the Unity dev pass they already sold, you know, negotiate with the AAA devs that are using Unity to find some sort of revenue thing for them alone. But like they tried to force this really stupid idea down mid and cause so much backlash and damage. Uh, it makes no sense to me. I have a genuine question. Why do people greed so much to get like $300 million when anything above 10 to 50 million literally does not matter? I think the limits of human greed are way bigger than your tiny brain <laughs> can imagine. <laughs> I think that you don't understand how you need a bigger boat. I remember reading, this is from like, uh, this book is about Cornelius Vanderbilt's life. He's one of the first uh, tycoons ever. He actually is called the first tycoon. Where it's like people started to get, you know, around the industrial era, people started to get levels of wealth that were impossible before. Because you could be at the top of a huge fucking pyramid of factories and businesses. And so he started to get levels that were unimaginable. And I think, I don't know if it was this book, but I think there's one of these early tycoons, right? Who's like a good trillionaire. <laughs> Adjusted for inflation, they're, you know, $100 billion, whatever. They're crazy. And he was complaining that like his friend, who is just regular rich, gets to do all the things he gets to do. <laughs> He's like, my friend, who's like a normal rich person, he gets to sit in the nice seats at the opera. He gets to drive a nice, the latest motor car like me. Like we both ride first class on the train. Like no one, like I have so much more wealth than him and our lives don't get to be different. And he gets to live like in relative, um, you know, obscurity and doesn't have to worry about the press being all over him and everyone hating him. And I don't. <laughs> And it was just, it was so out of touch and funny. And all that was true until they invented mega yachts. <laughs> and that, my understanding is that is why mega yachts were invented. <laughs> because mega yachts are the one thing on this fucking planet that separates like a hundred millionaire from a multi-billionaire. <laughs> That's the only thing. If you're a multi-billionaire, you can buy a mega yacht, Jeff Bezos because they're so fucking stupid and so fucking expensive to maintain, to build, the upkeep, the staff. They're just so expensive that unless you have absolute fuck you money, you can't afford them. And so now Jeff Bezos can flex on a regular millionaire, <laughs> hundred millionaire. Um, and yeah, I guess even, even, even beyond that might be fucking a space company, <laughs> you know, cause that's what Elon and Jeff have, but. They make them in my city. It's absolutely insane what tech they put in these. Yeah, I mean, they're they're just insane. They're insane, insane bastions of wealth are mega yachts. And they really can only be held by like the point one of the point one of the point one, just like that.